Hey everybody and welcome back to another episode of Northwest Craftsman. Today we're going to be continuing our joint series with the rabbit joint. Now the rabbit joint is really useful when you're trying to put together boxes, picture frames, and a variety of other things and it's also pretty simple and you don't even necessarily need to use it as a joint. You can use it as a recess for anything. That's actually what you generally use it for in a picture frame where you kind of recess the glass or recess the photo into the frame itself and that's a rabbit or a rebate joint depending on where you are in the world as to how you call it. So I'm going to give you a quick overview of the rabbit joint compared to other joints and then we're going to go ahead and get started on how to make it work. All right, let's go. A rabbit joint is a really easy joint to make and is primarily used on corners and on edges. In this particular case, I have a preview that shows using it on a corner like you would use in a box. Some of the advantages to a rabbit joint is that it is easy, it is fast, and it's quick to align and glue. Some of the disadvantages are though is that it does require glue because there is no mechanical interfacing on this joint itself, it is just edges coming together. Another disadvantage is that this joint is much easier with specialized equipment, and though that doesn't sound like a downside because I'm saying it's much easier to do it with specialized equipment, it's because it somewhat requires specialized equipment. If you're only doing this by hand, it can be very difficult and time consuming to make. For the different categories that this fits in, you're not really gonna be using this on a corner like you see here with a miter joint, but you will be using it on a box. You can't use it in structural elements without it being part of a box. I was trying to think through all the different ways that you might use this structurally, and it just really kind of turned into another box. So not really gonna be used for structures. And then on the edge, you can kind of get away with it, although it's kind of a long half lap joint that you're using, but I kind of gave it credit that you could use it on an edge if you're trying to join two pieces away like this. For complexity, I would give it a 2 out of 5 because it is a pretty simple joint overall. The reason why it's not just a 1 out of 5 on complexity is because it does require some specialized equipment to do it easily. For strength, I'm going to give it a 2 out of 5 because it doesn't have any mechanical interfacing. It does require glue and it is not the strongest joint outside of just the glue, especially because there's usually a lot of end grain associated with the rabbit. Some other notes is that you're going to need to pay attention because while you're dimensioning it, the combination of depth and thickness is going to play together. It's not the exact length of your pieces that is going to give you the width of your box or the width of your joint. You're going to need to make sure that you know what depth you're going, what total thickness you have, and kind of take everything into combination. Also, uh, data stacks make this very easy because you can use multiple thicknesses and get multiple depths very, very quickly and easily. So if you're going to be making one of these, I would highly recommend you get a data stack. So looking at your two work pieces, you're gonna kind of visualize them by kind of slotting them together at the end here. And then what's gonna happen is the piece in my right hand is actually going to sit at a little depth on the inside of it. So we're gonna to wanna to carve out a groove that is the same thickness as our right hand work piece, but at a custom depth for whatever we choose. And then even though we're not gonna cover it in this video, here's a quick visualization of what it would look like if you're doing a picture frame. Essentially, you're gonna get your corners exactly how you want, whether you're using a miter, a half lap, or some other combination of joints. We've already done a couple of those, so check those out in the joint series. But basically, on the inside, you're going to cut a groove or a rabbit that's gonna allow your glass and your picture to sit on the inside. So the first step is to load in a dado stack that is the exact thickness of your piece. Now, if you don't have a dado stack that's at the capacity, you can always go a little bit lower and take two passes like I'm going to do here. The next step is to go ahead and set your dado depth to the right depth, and this depth is custom depending on how far you want to go in. I would not recommend going more than halfway into the receiving work piece so that you've got at least half the thickness remaining. Once you have everything set, if you have your dado stack at the thickness of your workpiece, you're going to line it up just with the end, and then you're going to just run it over the top. In this case, as I had said, I don't have the right dado thickness for the thickness of my workpiece, so I'm going to end up doing this in two passes. Slowly pass it over your dado stack. You want to make sure that you don't have too much chipping of your end grain coming off the other side. It's pretty easy for this to happen, and you can see it happening a little bit there. I've also heard that you can control this by putting some painter's tape across the edge as it wraps around the end to the end grain to help stabilize that as it's cutting through. Go ahead and give it a quick test fit to make sure that everything comes together properly. You want to check to see how much of a ledge you have from the uh, male portion of this workpiece, because if you have too much of a lip, then you can always just go through and take a very light pass on the dado to help it sit just a little bit deeper on the inside. 
Once everything fits to your liking, you're gonna glue it together just per the normal process. Apply plenty of glue, spread it nice and thin, and then you wanna make sure that when you clamp this together, you're getting glue coming out everywhere. Now in this case, because I'm only putting together two pieces, it's pretty difficult to get it to clamp together at 90 degrees. I had to end up adjusting the clamps on either side of the workpiece to allow it to clamp together properly. However, I will be having a video coming out soon where we put together a rabbit joint box and the box is a lot easier because you have four pieces all supporting each other and so when you clamp everything down, it tries to go square anyways and it only takes minor adjustments to keep it there. Well guys, that's how you make a rabbit joint. It really truly is that simple. Um... If you've got a data stack, it's super easy. You can also do the rabbit joint with a router. And I did do one a very long time ago on the channel where I did it by hand. They actually have a specific hand plane that you can do a rabbit joint with. Um, it takes a little bit of work and a little bit of a process. And obviously with a data joint or with a router, it's gonna be a little bit faster. But the rabbit joint is really useful, again, for picture frames, for a variety of other things. And um, I'm using it mostly for boxes. You can also use finger joints for boxes but a rabbit joint is a very quick and dirty way of doing it and we glue is really strong and so you're going to be able to hold it so uh, i don't know rabbit joints really useful it's also pretty simple so if you have any questions about how to do the rabbit joint or ways that you might be able to do it go ahead and leave it that down in the comment section down below and if you like the kind of content we're producing here at northwest craftsman we'd really appreciate a thumbs up and a subscription to the channel um, your subscription your activity your activity um, and your engagement on the channel is really helpful for us in growing and reaching more people and teaching more people about woodworking and how truly easy it can be. So thank you guys for joining. I really appreciate it. And I'll see you guys next time. All right. Bye.